So the goals for today, today we're going to learn about women leaders before the U.S. Constitution, and then the women's efforts to be included in the U.S. Constitution, and the amendment that was passed for women to vote, and what women have done to guarantee their right to vote, and the Equal Rights Amendment, the Equal Rights Act. So first I'm going to tell you a hidden story, a story not too many people know, that you will be privileged to know today. So women have been voting in this land for over a thousand years, just not officially as part of the nation state. The women of the Iroquois Confederacy, which brought together five indigenous nations with the practice of peace and consensus, was founded in 1142. They were known as a Great League of Peace. They planted the seed of participatory democracy that led to the formation of the United States on July 4th, 1776. In the Iroquois community, women have been the keepers of culture responsible for defining political, social, spiritual, and economic norms for their people. While Iroquois chiefs named Sashems were men, it was the women who nominated them for their leadership positions and made sure they fulfilled their responsibilities. If they didn't, the women would pull the men and find a different replacement to represent them. Women also controlled the food and the resources necessary for the men to go into battle. We have learned a lot from the Iroquois people as a nation. In 1988, the U.S. Senate acknowledged the contributions made by the Iroquois Confederacy in the formation and development of the United States and its Constitution, though they did not acknowledge women's contributions. So women were left out of the U.S. Constitution, and this is why today's lecture is important. The Founding Fathers met in Philadelphia in 1787 to draft the U.S. Constitution. They did not have women's rights in mind. They did not grant women the right to vote or voice in the government that was being formed. There was a simple reason for this neglect. Both the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were based on an 18th century concept of justice and equality that was exclusively white and male, based on land ownership. On September 17, 1787, the final draft of the U.S. Constitution was signed by 39 delegates. The document was then sent to the states for ratification and went into effect in June 21, 1788, when New Hampshire became the ninth state to ratify the Constitution. Remember the women. Abigail Smith Adams, married to John Adams, is usually quoted as suggestly mildly to her husband, John Adams, remember the ladies. Actually, the reality is she wrote him a threatening letter. Do not put such unlimited power in the hands of husbands. Remember, all men would be tyrants if they could. We are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. Other names that you should also become acquainted with are Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, and Lucy Stone, as these two were important figures in the women's rights movement to vote. So who was the, na the woman named for saying, remember the ladies? Take a second and look at your options. Remember the ladies came from Abigail Smith Adams, and her quote is, We are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. So what would our society be like if women were allowed to write the Constitution? Hmm, that's a great question for us to ask. Women were not given the right to vote. Women organized and fought for the right to vote, and they're known as suffragettes. So I would like to introduce you to a short video by Lady Gaga. It's called Bad Romance, Women's Suffrage. And the link is right in front of you on YouTube. So you can put Lady Gaga, Women's Suffrage. And please take a few minutes today and watch that video. And what you'll see in that video is, is images of women marching, um, protesting, oftentimes being beaten, arrested, and considered mentally ill for wanting to vote. So the suffragettes are women who campaign for the right to vote. Please remember that. Susan B. Anthony is sitting on your left, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton sits on the porch on the right uh, in New York. These are some of the pioneers in the suffragette movement. But there's also the role of African-American women or African women that came and were descendants of slaves. Black women's activism began with the fight against slavery. So here we have a famous quote by Sojourner Truth. I have done a great deal of work, as much as a man, but did not get so much pay. We do as much, we eat as much, and we want as much. It doesn't say we want more. Um, it's we want as much. 
So the source comes from Truth Be Told, and this is a digital archive where you can learn more. So voting rights for women. Voting rights in the United States were born with struggle. On August 26, 1920, the U.S. Secretary of State certified that the 19th Amendment to the Constitution had been ratified by the required 36 states. It became the law of the land. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. The U.S. Constitution was passed on September 17, 1787, which is why uh, it's important to celebrate the Constitution on the state. But if we do the math, it took us 133 years after the U.S. Constitution was signed for women to be able to vote. And that's not all women. It's important to know that women have had to navigate state laws, had to prove their age, their citizenship, and often their mental capacity and their competency to be able to vote. African American women and men have experienced voter suppression and had to continue fighting against voter taxes, the fear of lynching, and intimidation at the polls. The women who fought for the right for women to vote are known as suffragists. So you'll hear the word suffragists and suffragettes, and they're interchangeable. There's some slight differences. But here I, I have an image of 1913 of a women's suffrage parade, which shows that, you know, it was not just a few women that were arguing or protesting, but there was a lot of women taking to the streets and carrying their signs and organizing um, to be able to vote. 1920 is an important year because that's the year that the 19th Amendment was ratified. Women finally got the vote in 1920 when the 19th Amendment was ratified, more than a century ago, 133 years after the Constitution was written. Let me tell you a little bit about the Equal Rights Amendment or the Equal Rights Act. A few years later, in 1923, the Equal Rights Amendment was introduced in Congress to give women all the other rights also included in the Constitution. The amendment makes discrimination against women unconstitutional and prohibits legal distinction between the sexes when it comes to property, employment, and a host of other things. The Equal Rights Amendment is a proposed amendment to the United States Constitution designed to guarantee equal legal rights for all American citizens regardless of sex. ERA seeks to end the legal distinctions between men and women in terms of divorce, property, employment, and other matters. The Equal Rights Amendment was originally written by Alice Paul and Crystal Eastman and was first introduced in Congress in December of 1923. In January of 2020, Virginia ratified the ERA, giving the amendment the support required to become part of the Constitution. The Equal Rights Act is now in the House of Representatives, which was voted uh, to extend the deadline, and the Senate is still uh, waiting to do so. We're still not equitably represented. Congress didn't get around to passing the Equal Rights Act until the 1970s, and even then, it fell short of the 38 states needed for ratification by the time the deadline expired in 1982. It has been introduced in every session of Congress since, but has never made it to the floor for a vote. As I mentioned earlier, Virginia became the 38th state to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment in January of 27, 2020, and we're still waiting for the vote. Now is mo the moment for change. The Me Too campaign was really important for amplifying the passage of the Equal Rights Act. We're hearing from women and girls around the country who want to know what they can do to get constitutional equality and asking about when is the next rally. So what can we do in our lives to promote gender equity? This is important. Although we're talking about the U.S. Constitution and we're still waiting for the Equal Rights Act to be passed, I want you to think about what can we do to bring gender equity at home, at school, at work, in our private lives, and in public spaces. What can we do to create spaces for women to be at the table, to have choices over their bodies, over their minds, and over their futures? History systematically omits women's contributions to democracy. This is important to know, and I hope that this is a lesson I can share with you today. Mary Ann Schnall has noted that many history books systematically erase women and their contributions to history. She notes that less than 3% of the words in history books are specifically about women, and only 5% of all images of historical figures are women of color. 
And this and other important facts are now being known with help from projects such as Truth Be Told, a digital collection of historical information, portraits, and artifacts funded by Melinda Gates to help tell a more inclusive stories of women and the suffrage movement.